Hey guys, welcome back to week 26 of the MIT Challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So I wanted to update you guys on last week when I was talking about doing the projects and assignments for the 6004 class computation structures. And this class is the bridge between electrical engineering and computer science. So basically, how do you take the principles of physics, the principles of circuits and electricity and magnetism, and use that to build a computer? And so it was an interesting class, not only because of the topic, but also because the open courseware, which I've been using to do all these MIT classes for free, was very scant for the class. There weren't any videos. There weren't any lecture notes. There were just some lecture slides. And there wasn't a textbook for the class. So how was I going to learn the material well enough to do the assignments? And I actually found in doing them that it was a lot more approachable than I originally thought. So I went through the lecture materials. And there was a nice little um, concept summary, which wasn't as full as a textbook, but it explained some of the concepts in more detail than the slides did. And more importantly than that, the assignments had very detailed documentation. So it really walked you through how you can accomplish the steps of the assignment so that it's not just completely left up to your own devices. You actually get a little bit of instruction in the actual assignment specifications. So the assignments were very interesting. That included also a larger design project where you built a working CPU just using gate level specifications. So basically just using things like ANDs and ORs and not gates, so logic gates, I was able to build a working computer just by hooking up wires together, so a working CPU. And so that was a very interesting project. And it brings to a more broad point where I get a lot of emails from people saying that they'd like to learn subject X, like they'd like to learn psychology or biology or chemistry but the material that they want to study they don't really have that much in MIT's open courseware maybe it just has a syllabus it doesn't even have any lecture notes or it doesn't have a lot of detailed instruction in order to really help you the way some classes do where they have videos and endless amounts of material so how do you learn the course when there isn't really that much of a course to be found so there's two strategies I've been using for that one is to be flexible in how I learn something. So for some classes, I use the lecture videos heavily. So if, it, if a class has lecture videos, I always go through the lecture videos because even though they might not be quite as efficient as reading through something, they give you a better sense of what's important and what's not important just by the lecture style. You can sort of focus in on these are the details that are important to remember. Um, so I use lecture videos for some classes, but then other classes I'll use the textbook. So textbook learning is very different from using lecture videos, but if you're flexible with both styles, you can learn any class you want, because if there isn't videos for it, then there's usually a textbook for it or a set of notes. So that's the first way, is to do this sort of bartering approach where sometimes you use one method and sometimes you use a different method. The second approach is that actually there's way more MIT courses available than are just on MIT's open courseware. So what I've been doing is that let's say there's a class that I really need material for or the class doesn't have that much material on open courseware and I want more material, how do I get it? And the way I've been using is to use MIT's public access courses. So for MIT what you can do is you can just go on Google and MIT's system uses Stellar is the name of their system for keeping track of courses and handling registration. If you just type Stellar and then the department number, so for computer science and electrical engineering that's six, for philosophy that's 24, for physics it's eight, for mathematics it's it's 18. So you just have to look on the uh, numbers. So 6.004 means it's department 6 and then it's course number 4. So if you look for the, the first number before the courses, that will be what department it is in. So if you just Google Stellar and then the department number, so Stellar 6 for electrical engineering and computer science courses, you should be able to find a page which lists all of the websites, individual course websites for all of the courses MIT students have access to. Now some of these are restricted access, so some of them will have MIT or class next to the name, and that means that you need to have an MIT login or password in order to access some of the material. So if you have a friend that goes to MIT or you can find someone that goes there, maybe you'll be able to get access to some of the material. However, quite a few of them have public next to them. So if you find one that has public next to it, it means you can go on that website, anyone can go on the website and download the material there. So often there's lecture slides, there's assignments, there's old exams, 
and even in some cases I found huge sets of like detailed lab course structure uh, information that I wouldn't have been able to find just on open courseware. So for example, the class Intro to Electrical Engineering and Computer Science 2, uh, which I did in the fall, that wasn't even a class offered in MIT's open courseware. They only have 6001. They didn't have 6002 for uh, the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science 2. However, I was able to use this public access courses to find basically all the material I needed to fully lead the uh, learn the course, including a completely free set of course notes, which is about a 200 page textbook, which is just completely free, which you can just find online. So I'm not sure exactly why a lot of these courses aren't on OpenCourseWare. It could be just different types of systems or, you know, different uh, bureaucratic things with, uh, within MIT. But if you understand the way MIT and other universities keep track of their courses and you might be able to find some that are public access and if you access those ones publicly you can get a lot of material that isn't available on the other sites so I've been using that a lot to get extra exams, to get extra assignments, to get extra notes um, to supplement the material that's currently on OpenCourseWare so I also did that in the case for uh, this last class, 6004, so there was very little material in OpenCourseWare, and there wasn't a whole lot in the public access courses. Sometimes there isn't, but there wasn't a whole lot in the public access courses, but there were a few documents that were really helpful in explaining some of the material better, so I was able to better complete the design projects. So thanks for following, and I'll be updating you guys next week where I hope to have completed classes 18, 19, and 20 of the total 33 I plan to write in the MIT Challenge. So thanks, and I'll see you next week.